Hello and welcome to my channel. Thank you for popping in here. If you are new here, then please like and subscribe for me. It would really help out. Comment below with your thoughts or topics you'd like me to cover and check out my website, consultingninja.tech. Don't forget, if you find this content helpful, to smash that notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video. With that out of the way, let's get right to it. We are going to be jumping straight into refresh tokens. This has been asked for a whole bunch and we're doing it today. If you're not familiar with what a refresh token is, a refresh token is a secondary authentication token that can be presented to the server for the sole purpose of generating a new access or new authentication token. A typical login looks like this. When you go to your login page, you type in your username and password. And when I log in, I'm moved to the next route or the dashboard. In this case, just this protected route that says you are authenticated. But when that happens, we're generating a new JWT token and we're storing that in a cookie. We can see that by going to inspect application and looking at our cookies and there's our authentication token. If I click the logout button, that cookie is deleted and we're sent back to the login page. If I try to access that protected route, I am kicked back to the login page saying, please sign in again. Most of the logic behind this rests in the hooks.server.ts file. That's what's constantly checking for that cookie. And if it's there, it pulls out the JWT to make sure that everything checks out with authentication and then sets a locals that's being checked for in the rest of the application's routes. Now, in order to make use of refresh tokens, we're gonna make some changes to the hooks.server.ts. And since we're doing that anyway, I'm gonna give you guys a bonus and I'm gonna show you how to implement two handle functions in your same hooks.server.ts file. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is in the top of the file, we're going to first import a helper function from SvelteGit, import sequence from SvelteJS slash kit slash hooks. Let's just go ahead and delete that whole thing out, get rid of it. And then we're going to make an async function called first handle. And it's going to look the same. It's going to take an event and resolve like that. And then we're just going to do a const response equals await resolve passing in the event and then return the response. And this is typically what a hook looks like. If you don't do anything, this is the standard implementation. And now let's put a console.log here and say first handle. And we can copy and paste this, copy, paste, and we'll call this second handle like that. And we'll change the console.log here to second. And now what we do is in the very bottom, we export const handle and we assign that to sequence and then we pass sequence first handle and second handle and the sequence helper function is going to make sure that those are run in the correct order one thing I'll point out here is that there is an example of this in the svelte kit documentation however I feel like it's a terrible example because what they're doing inside are HTML transforms that actually run backwards. So if you were to try to implement their example, it just comes out looking really funny because the stuff that's happening in the second function is printed out before the stuff happening in the first function. So this is a much better example in my, in my opinion. So let's go ahead and give that a save. And now in our application, let's just click anywhere and then look in our terminal and you can see first handle printed out and then second handle. Both of our handle hooks running one after another. Now, I don't know about you, but my mind immediately thought, this is perfect, exactly what I need for implementing refresh tokens in my application. I can check for the authentication token in the first handle function. If it doesn't pan out, 
hey, in the second one, I'll just check to see if there's a refresh token, and if there is, we'll just generate our new access token at that point. So that's exactly what we're going to do. First though, inside of the login plus page.server.ts, we need to make a modification to the login action. And what we need to do is if the username and password checks out, we need to also set a refresh token in here as well. And in order to do that, it's pretty straightforward. We're only gonna make a few modifications. One, in my previous example, I had the expires in set to 24 hours. We want to change, take off the quotes and just put a number. And for this example, I'm gonna do 10. The expires in property, if you pass it, a number not wrapped in quotes, it's going to assume seconds, and so this would be 10 seconds. And I'm doing this as an example so that we can see the tokens refreshing in pretty much real time. In your own application, you would wanna make this whatever you're comfortable with, five minutes, 10 minutes, an hour, uh, whatever your need is. The cookie doesn't matter because the token inside of it will be expired long before the cookie's expired. But let's go ahead and copy all of this from the auth token all the way through the signing and the cookie setting. And let's go ahead and put one space so that we can see what we're doing and paste that in there. And we're gonna change this to const refresh token. Refresh token. And we're gonna generate another token here using jwt.sign. We're signing the same user so that's fine. And then here in the expires in, we're gonna change that to quotes 120D, that's 120 days or three months. And then we're gonna set that cookie here, taking off auth and putting a refresh token. And then of course we want to pass the refresh token itself and not the old auth token. One last change is we need to set the max age on the cookie currently 60 times 60 times 24 or one day. So we just need to times that by 120 to get the three months. So if we save this, and if we go back to our application and go to login, and I enter my username and password, it kicked me back because our hook is no longer checking. But if we look in our application cookies, we can see there is our authentication token and there is our refresh token. So now inside of our hooks, let's go ahead and make use of those to actually do what we need to do. So in our hooks.server.ts, we've already split this up into two functions. So now we can just fill them back in. The logic for the first handle function is going to be exactly what was in there before. If you deleted it, go ahead and copy it back from the repository. It's really the second handle function where we're going to do something different. And inside of here, what we're going to do is first we need to check to see, let's go ahead and just delete all this. What we want to do is check to see if the event.locals.auth user has not been set. So if not event.locals.auth user, then we're going to check to see if there is a refresh token. Const refresh token equals, and we can actually copy this from up here. Event.cookies.get refresh token. like that. And then we're going to check the claim. So we can go ahead and copy this as well. In between here though, let's add one other thing, just like we have up here. If there is no refresh token, then we want to just make sure that event.locals has not been set. And then we'll check the refresh token itself, replace the auth token there with refresh token. If the refresh token, again, here we can copy and paste. This is almost identical logic here. Copy and paste this, except for, again, this will be refresh token in claims. If the refresh token is there, if it's verified, it's not expired, 
then we're going to go ahead and set the locals on auth user but we're also going to generate a new authentication token so let's go ahead and add that in here const auth token equals jwt dot sign and we're going to put our auth user that's going to be the user minus password from right here we need to pass in our secret key and then we need to set our expires we're gonna leave this with 10 seconds so that we can see that again and I move my bracket there we want accidentally put my bracket in the wrong spot and then we're going to set the cookie event dot cookies dot set auth token and we're going to set it to auth token and then we need to set some things on here http only true max age and this is going to be that 60 times 60 times 24 and same site is going to be strict and then we need to do our event dot resolve and return the response and let's give that a save so now if I go to protected route you can see I didn't even have to sign in what happened was as soon as I clicked the button I was no longer authenticated and so it checked the refresh token that we had already set since it was verified it then used it to generate a new auth token and we can see that if I open up the auth token and we just kind of look at the string here and if I wait about 10 seconds and I go back you can see that the string in fact changes because that token the auth token is only good for 10 seconds once it expires the refresh token is used in that handle hook to generate a new authentication token that is how you can implement refresh tokens in your application today let me just say that one thing for sure is that if you really wanted this to be secure the refresh token server would be a server that just takes the refresh token and issues an access token it wouldn't be doing both but this is still better than nothing that way our access token is constantly being refreshed and we're not using the same token very often you also if you wanted to instead of using uh, cookies you could store the refresh token in local storage I prefer cookies I feel like they're easier to use myself uh, the choice would be yours so I hope that you found this video helpful if you did please like and subscribe comment below with your thoughts Go implement refresh tokens in your application today. And as always, have a great day.